Hi there and welcome back to Japan. And sorry that this is not going to be a traditional video in that traditional sense. I was a bit ill recently and no one wants to see that. So instead, I'll be doing a little video about a question I have been asked many, many times. What is a record producer? I mean, what does their job actually entail? There's so many legendary producers, but to the average listener, it could be hard to know what they even do. Why do they get all that industry credit? And is there a simple way of explaining it? Well, after a lot of thought about what is a wide reaching title, I think I thought of a good way to do so. So let's start with the simplest description in the quintessential setting. Imagine you have a traditional rock or pop band, a drummer, a bassist, a guitarist, someone singing and another member to add a little color to the sound. It could be a lead guitarist or a keyboard player. Now imagine them just playing their music in a room. No effects, nothing. In their simplest form, a producer is responsible for taking the creative decisions that go between that and a finished album or song. It could be effects from subtle vocal echo to psychedelic distortion. It could be suggesting a drum microphone position being moved to get a different tone out of the kit or suggesting the drummer just programs a digital beat instead for this song. It could be the addition of extra instruments, string arrangements, or suggesting that the band needs to go for a simple and raw sound anything between. It's a trusted advisor who helps get the most out of a song in its recorded form. But with such a varied task, is there a good equivalent that helps us consider the task in a perhaps more familiar context? Well, yes, indeed. Again, I believe there is. See, if you were to imagine that musicians were actors, songwriters were scriptwriters, the record producer would therefore be the movie's director. Movie directors being a much more well understood and celebrated bunch for the best part, both roles are highly creative and yet they're usually actually focused on interpreting creative works brought to them or that they found and wanted to do something with. Yes, an actor can write and direct their own film just as a musician can write and produce their own album, both with a range of fantastic and potentially awful consequences. I did not. Oh, hi, Mark. But as a general, these are very different skills. In the same way that a director is qualified to advise an actor how to act a scene that they themselves could probably never do, so too a record producer can advise a musician on a different approach to playing something that they maybe could never play themselves, but the musician obviously wants to play. Now, therefore, both roles require that the performer has full trust, as I say, and respect in the creative opinions of their interpreter, as they will use them as the person who's looking at their performance from the outside and should understand the conveyed emotions and tones of the piece, and they can say properly how it's coming across if it is coming across in a way that is going to be effective or not. Now, obviously, there are some differences, but I think the most relevant difference is that musicians often are their own writers and therefore will likely have a fairly large say in choosing the uh, record producer who most suits their sound, whereas a movie director is more likely to have a say in choosing the actor who suits their style. The movie director is more required to make significant creative choices as well, as they're framing every single shot, whereas the record producer may choose to change little beyond the musician's own uh, vision and input, simply confirming it is okay as it was originally imagined. However, there is a similarity in that sort of working relationship. Now, Genres and other factors can affect the role of a producer too, and how big that role is. As mentioned before, in some raw and heavy self-written genres, the producer may have extremely subtle input. Whereas, in pop, where the artist might not be the songwriter and a wider range of sounds and effects is commonly accepted, the producer might have greater creative control to forge a very unique sound out of a song. In hip hop, notably, the producer is often just the name given to the person who provides the entire piece of music under the vocals. Now that stems from the genre's origins where rap was performed simply to a loop of another earlier piece of music. Um, before then, there, there were samples were added, layered over the top of each other, beats were added, and slowly it evolved into an actual specifically written uh, piece of music. So something that evolved out of DJs went through a sort of production phase. And although producers in hip hop are often a form of writer themselves, they're still kind of referred to as producers. 
Now, different producers, like different movie directors, have their own hallmarks. Some adapt well to different styles, knowing how to take anything and make it appealing for the current masses and style whilst respecting the writing. Others leave their mark and individual sound on everything they touch or individual look for a director, and they can attract and retain artists for this reason. Now, I recently used a Wes Anderson comparison in another review, and when you think of his directing, he always pulls from the same color palette and composition, and it's charming and distinct and used on varying types of stories, but very notably in his way. I think this could equally be said of Nakata Yasutaka's approach to the works of Perfume and Kyari Pami Pami. He just has a presentation, a set of familiar artistic devices and a style that marks his work. Yeah, so Kyari Pami Pami is to Nakata Yasutaka what Bill Murray is to Wes Anderson. Never thought you'd hear that comparison, did you? I guess this would make Michael Bay into just like a club DJ, therefore, focused only on impact and no real depth. But I'm pretty sure Steve Aoki puts more effort into switching up his style than Mr. Bay. So I'll leave you decide, uh, leave you to decide that and try not to offend anyone on the way through. <laughs> well, anyway, I thought this would make an interesting framework for answering a question that I have heard so many times. For all the producers I've worked with, I must say they all have a different approach and a different level of involvement that they prefer, but they are the thing that takes artistic brilliance and packages it for the world. They can give artists the confidence to try new things by letting them know if something seems to be working and, if not, helping them make it work. We shouldn't therefore be surprised that artists tend to stick with one of their chosen director or record producer for a long time. When George Martin was referred to as the fifth Beatle, it might have sounded like a nice little cutesy honour, but I can imagine why they might have actually genuinely felt that. Anyway, thank you so much for listening to this ramble, and I hope it gave you an interesting perspective, so feel free to tell me if you can think of any other interesting movie director record producer comparisons a big thank you for liking and subscribing and all that youtube stuff a lot of appreciation for our patrons as always who still keep us going when we remain non-monetized for better or worse you will be seeing my face back hopefully sometime soon and thank you you for making it through to the end of this video so until i see you soon for the next one of these from here in japan for now ciao ciao <laughs>